Hello and welcome to the O'Galley High School YouTube channel. I've been using the 10.5 inch iPad Pro for school for the past semester and this is my review. The 10.5 inch iPad Pro has a very small bezel so it's actually not much bigger than a 9.7 inch tablet would be. So it's comfortable to carry around but the 10.5 inch screen size offers a big enough screen to write on comfortably. The app, writing with the Apple Pencil feels similar to writing with a regular pencil. You can hold it like a regular pencil, you can rest your palm on the iPad screen. The only difference is that it has less friction and it also does need to be recharged. However, on a full battery, the Apple Pencil lasts one week and it only takes around 30 minutes to recharge. The iPad Pro has a home button below the display which doubles as a fingerprint sensor. It is a clickable button as opposed to the taptic feedback button that you get on the iPhone 7 and 8. It is the same fingerprint sensor though as the 6s 7 and 8 so it is very fast and accurate. The 10.5 inch screen is at a 1668 by 2224 resolution giving it a 264 pixel per inch pixel density which is about average for a tablet but most phones have a higher pixel density and that is noticeable when looking at it close up. The, it uses LCD technology instead of OLED, which means that it doesn't have as vivid colors and it also doesn't have as deep blacks. LCDs usually use more electricity than OLEDs, but since with a tablet you're usually browsing the internet or taking notes, the, here the display will be mostly displaying white, and displaying white with OLED actually uses more power than LCD, so the uh, LCD technology is better for battery life on a tablet and it also does not have burn-in problems. The 10.5 inch iPad Pro does support the full DCI-P3 color gamut so it has very accurate colors and it also has a maximum brightness of 480 lux. There is also the True Tone feature which uses the ambient light sensor to adapt the color temperature of the display to its surroundings. This does lower the maximum brightness to 420 lux, but that won't usually matter when using it inside. The two biggest problems with the iPad Pro's display are that it gets fingerprints very easily, and it also does not have 3D touch, which is built into many places in iOS, so the iPad does use long press a lot, and sometimes even uses a longer press. But many things that can be done with 3D touch can't be done at all on the iPad Pro. The iPad Pro 10.5 has very long battery life. It can easily last all day on a 50% charge and sometimes even can last all day on a 20% charge if you use it lightly. It can charge up to a 50% charge in an hour and a half and it can charge up to 100% in three hours and a half. You can also get a fast charger so that it can charge up to 100% in two hours sold separately. It runs iOS, so you can't do as much as you would on Windows, but that also does make it a lot faster. It has the Apple A10X, but it is as fast as some Intel Core i7 tablets. You can easily use it for Photoshop or video editing. And it actually can be used as a replacement for a phone. The camera is about the same one as is used in the iPhone 7, except with a smaller field of view. And if your school has Wi-Fi, that could be used instead of the cellular data. 